Um, I am so pleased to be introducing Laura and Martha. They are representing two different time zones right now, even different from the Atlantic one that I'm currently in. Um, the New Brunswick Environmental Network has a uh, collaborative team that is called the Sustainability Education Alliance. We have more than 600 people that are interested in this. And that's hopefully where a lot of you have heard from, uh, uh, have heard about this webinar from. Um, this is also an initiative that um, Louise Como is very uh, dear to this. Um, she has been um, a great force in climate change education, especially at the post-secondary level and figuring out um, how to have a community of practice formed. And that is where this webinar is coming from. Um, Louise and the New Brunswick Environmental Network and Sustainability Education Alliance joined forces this past year to create the Climate Change Educators Community Hub. And um, Louise is great at making sure there's um, awesome programming to help um, educators learn how to incorporate climate change education into um, their everyday teachings, no matter what the subject is. Um, and we have lots of great programming that makes sure that that happens in kindergarten to grade 12 levels as well, um, as well as early childhood education. Um, the website that you can be connected to is going to be put in the chat as soon as I'm done talking because I can't talk and type at the same time. Um, we are currently in the Wabanaki Confederacy. Um, the location of the NBEN office is in the territory of the Mi'kmaq people, um, stewards of this land since time immemorial. Um, and that also includes the, um, in the rest of the Wabanaki Confederacy, there is the Wolastagwe peoples, the Penobscot, the Passamaquoddy, and the Abenaki. Um, and I did not figure out exactly where Mar Laura and Martha are, so I cannot speak to the territories that they are currently on. Um, and I'm so glad to give them the floor in this exciting initiative. Here we go. Awesome. Can you hear me? Uh, up in volume, maybe a little bit. Up the volume. Okay. Oh, Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, just a bit. Well, listen, thank you so much um, to all of you for joining this webinar. Um, Martha and I are absolutely thrilled to be here and to have this important conversation with you today. And I have to say, we're more than impressed by the initiative that's been started here. And education just has such a central role to play in communicating this message and to really equipping um, particularly the next generation on, on what they're going to need to deal with and it's not a simple task um, so you know your roles are just so critical and um, so a huge thank you to uh, Dr. Como for the invitation we're truly honored um, that you've reached out to us and allowed us to be a, a part of this and we hope that this will maybe even be the start of you know, an ongoing relationship with several of you um, to provide whatever help we can as you continue on this, on this journey. So first of all, thank you. Um, and before we go too far, I, I do just wanna recognize um, our hearts do go out to any of you who either have been affected or know somebody who's been affected by this, uh, this terrible pandemic. It's definitely a challenging time that we're all facing. Um, and so just wanted to recognize that and, you know, everyone, everyone is facing a difficult time right now. So <clears throat> we're all, we're all going to get through this together. Um, and I do hope that at the end of it, this pandemic will have shown maybe some lessons, um, learned that are going to help us in this next fight, uh, which is for, for climate, the climate crisis, including climate justice and so on. So we're getting our defenses ready. I'm hope I'm hopeful. So <clears throat> Let me just do a quick introduction um, of the two of us. Um, and I won't read through these in the interest of time. So I'll just say that uh, Martha and I, again, we're just thrilled to be here. We're gonna be your facilitators today at, on this overview webinar. Both of us are trained- and now on the, on the, on the des ambassadeurs climatiques, uh, and roads, on va parler d'en roads tantôt. This, this simulation tool debuted in December of 2019. And certified, I think maybe in the first quarter of this year. 
Um, by March, they had about 100 facilitators globally, and I think now they've just reached, uh, just hit over the uh, 500 mark. So at the end, we'll give you a little pitch, an invitation to, uh, to join us and to join well, the learning so. and the movement. Um, so you'll have this presentation sent out after today. So I won't go through any of the rest of it, but if you have any questions on any of it, and our contact information will be here as well, um, feel free to, to reach out if we can help you in any way. So what are we going to do? To try to talk about En-ROADS in an hour is a daunting task. So what we're hoping to do is to whet your appetite. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview of what this thing called En-ROADS is. Um, and then we'll take a peek at, I don't know if you call them three or four different formats, three formats, one of which has two versions. So there is a student assignment, short and long version. There's a climate workshop and there's a climate game. And then we'll step back and we'll say, okay, what are some of the things you might want to think about to figure out which of those options are the best for your course or for your objectives? <clears throat> we have some thoughts on why En-ROADS works as well as it does, how it works and why it works that we'd love to share with you. And then we will stop for questions. So while I would love to have an, an ongoing dialogue through the entire presentation, I know that we won't be able to give you all the good information that we want to. So what we'll do is um, we'll do most of the talking for the first half and then we'll have 20 minutes for questions. And so as you get questions, jot them down, don't lose them. Um, and then we'll engage with those at the end. And then after that, you can always send us questions by email. Sound good? Okay, so we'll start with the first section and then we'll come back and talk about how do you figure out which ones to pick? <clears throat> so let me just take us to the student assignment first. So this is the website. And again, don't worry about these links. They're all in the deck, so you'll have them later. Let's start with the um, student assignment. So if you go into tools, this is the Climate Interactive website, <clears throat> and come down to En-ROADS. Uh, sorry, Laura, we're not seeing uh, your yeah. screen. Oh. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Somi. There we go. There we now, go. Now, do you see the wonderful Dr. John Sturman? Yes. Of MIT? Yes, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the Climate Interactive website. And if we have some time at the end, we'll come back and look again more through the website, but I would really encourage everyone to, to go and check it out later when you have some time. Um, <clears throat> there are all sorts of different ways to use En-ROADS, as you can see. And the one I want to just take a look at quickly because you are who you are, the most important role in this fight is the student assignment. So this is probably the I don't want to say the easiest, it's, but it's all in one place. They've created two beautiful um, documents, assignments that are completely everything you need in one place. It's got the instructions. It's got the, the rubric. It's got, here's exactly the format that you need to put your own answer in and bring it back to your professor. So if you want to start with one of these, with short version or long version, everything you need is here. So let's say um, you decide on the short version. You can download it as a Word document, open it up. Now, is that going to, do I need to stop share again? Yeah. Um, no. Can you see this? No, we're back on the, the home screen, uh, the uh, gallery screen. There we go. Okay, good. So the assignment yep. goes through here are all the, this is what you would give to the students. Here are all the steps you need to do. Here are the questions for you. It tells you how to do it. And then it will even give you sort of a layout. This is, this is the questions you need to ask and then they can submit those back. On the long version, it's similar to this except that they will provide a screenshot of the climate scenario that they've developed and all the steps that they took. So I, you know, I planted trees and I put a tax on carbon and I, I did XXXX. Um, so it depends on how much time you have. 
but these are, I mean, they're, they're just sort of all in one place. They've really thought through, um, how do we make this easy? So that was the short version. Now, let me just go to the regular N roads. And I know this is, this is fast, but um, without a lot of time. So the simulator itself, if you were doing a workshop, can you see the- workshop? Yeah, we're on N roads now. Yeah, we're on the landing page now. Perfect. So if you had um, a desire for more conversation, more engagement and discussion with the students, then rather than an individual assignment, you could run an N roads climate workshop. And in this workshop, you'd come to the N roads simulator. You can see that at the bottom here are 18 different policy levers you could choose uh, to help address the climate emergency that we're in. And every time you make a change, the temperature will change and anything else will change and you'll be able to look at various graphs. And so I'm not gonna go through all of these graphs. I just wanna poke around a bit so you can see the depth that there is in this model. And the, the learning happens in two ways. It happens in the first way, same as the assignment. Students can move something and see, oh, look at that. Oil went down, isn't that fantastic? And what happened to temperature and so on and learn a bit that way. But in a workshop, before you even move anything, we will ask, so, okay, student A, you would like to put a tax on oil. Before I put that tax on oil, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to the various sources of energy? What do you think is going to happen to the price uh, for energy? And we have a bit of a conversation and then we move the slider and we discuss. So was that what you thought? Was it more than you thought, less than you thought? And the whole group can talk about why the results were as they were. And as the facilitator or as the educator, you can bring, can just go down so many levels. You can make connections to why it worked like this and what some of the other downstream consequences are, whether they're desirable or not desirable. And you can bring system dynamics principles to bear. Um, and the discussion gets really very, very interesting and very deep. So the goal, after several, you know, you enact several policies and so on with a lot of discussion on each. The goal is to get the increase in temperature to between 1.5 and 2 as per the Paris Agreement versus pre-industrial times. And it's not easy, which is one of the main messages from En-ROADS. We need to plant many, many seeds. There is no uh, one answer. So many students will come with a preconceived idea of something that they read in a, a paper a year ago, this fantastic big idea. There are lots of fantastic big ideas, but you need to have many of them to make the impact that we need uh, on temperature and on our climate. I'll just, I'm not gonna go into detail on one, but I just want to, I can't help it. <laughs> with each of these levers, there's a little three dots and you can open up more detail. So you can, rather than just saying, I want to encourage it or I want to discourage it, oil or coal or natural gas, you can get into details and say, okay, I want to have, I want to assume a certain cost reduction, a big breakthrough in renewables. And they will have next to here, the most pertinent graph for this particular level, lever that you've chosen. If you hit the little I, you get a lot more information on it. And, and it's just fantastic. It's very, very intuitive. It's colorful, it's engaging, it's interactive. Um, and it's truly, it's one of the, it's the best simulation model I've seen. So there are several other um, aspects of it that, that we could show you, but we would need a little bit more time. So let me go back to the presentation. So 
So I didn't mention about time. Student assignment, um, I suppose, is very flexible as to how much time you want to allow the students to have. A climate workshop, an hour and a half, uh, we found is sort of the sweet spot. It enables you to take a number of policy actions, get the temperature down to a livable climate range, and then have a really good discussion on what did that mean and what did we learn and how did you feel about that? Not just what did you think about that? How did you feel about that? And what gives you reason for hope? You can have all of that in a really, really good discussion in an hour and a half. If you had a couple of hours or two lessons, you could even add on more discussion to uh, multi-solving, you know, which is how do we fix two or three different problems with one, uh, one policy? So how do we, in addition to solving a climate issue, figure out how to improve um, equity in this area? Or how do we make sure that marginalized communities are not left behind? So how do we fix a number of things with just one action? And if you had more time, that's where I would probably spend it in a workshop. So that's an hour and a half, plus or minus 15 minutes to 30 minutes. The climate simulation game is probably four and a half hours is the sweet spot for the climate simulation game. And it is a completely different thing. It takes the climate workshop still as the base, but now instead of proposing a climate policy lever, because that's what you want to do, you are playing a role. You are, you are representing a particular stakeholder group. So what you essentially have is a UN role-playing game. And individual students are put into groups where they need to play the role and they're given briefing sheets. So these are what your objectives are. These are what your values are. And then you come to the game with that persona. So people learn not only about the climate and the interactions and equity, but they learn that it's not so easy just to do whatever I want. I need to convince the conventional oil industry of this. I need to listen to those climate activists because they're making a good point about that. So you learn that everybody needs to work together and we all bring our own values um, to the discussion. So it's, um, it, it is four and a half hour event, but it feels like a half an hour. <laughs> it's just, incredible with the learning um, that goes on. How are we doing for time, Martha? Can I share a story about um, the climate? I, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Let me just share a quick um, story because as educators, you, you want to know, does this, you know, how, how does this thing work? Give me confidence that this is, this is valuable. I was in a, or I, I still am in a, a program with the University of St. Michael's College and the University of Toronto, which is a um, social responsibility sustainability program. And we had an environmental module and I was so excited about En-ROADS. I had been uh, certified and had, had done several practice webinars. So I came to the program director and I said, this is, this is incredible. This, this thing is literally the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, so let's run it for our environmental module. I just, I just need an hour and a half. And so we decided to do that. And then, uh, you know, she researched it a bit more and said, why don't we do the game? So, okay, let's do the game. And then COVID hit. So we went from an excitement about having an in-person experience with the game. And there are so many different things you can do with the in-person uh, version of it to really show the power dynamics. Let's do it virtually. So, our entire group, our entire cohort was so disappointed that we couldn't be in person. So I knew that this needed to be an, uh, an engaging and upbeat and fun experience. It was incredible. It, it exceeded my expectations. We told people which groups they were in the night before. And we came with, uh, we had Captain Industry coming to us from the center of the universe. And we had Greta Thunberg, complete with pigtails, wagging her finger and admonishing all of the adults for how irresponsible we had been. It was fantastic. People really took their roles seriously. 
And what made me happy was at the end when the, the questions and the reflections come out and people talk about what gave them hope and, and how they are thinking differently and what they learned from the experience. You know, people shed their roles and then just become very real. It was incredible. And I don't think it's an understatement to say that whether it's the workshop or whether it's the role play game, the experience is transformational. You know, we know that this, this problem is huge and needs our attention. So to have this kind of transformational um, approach to, to shaking people's thinking uh, is, is incredible. And I would like to add that uh, from an out, as an outsider, um, as a climate ambassador across, across the country, um, the word travels these days uh, so much thanks to being a virtual, uh, having a virtual presence. Uh, I heard uh, comments, very complimentary comments by Diane Sachs, our top environmental lawyer, that she, she was complimenting uh, Laura's, uh, Laura's uh, a, a game uh, because she she had heard about it independently of the group, and then she brought that sharing to the group. So, don't don't boy do not underestimate how uh, not just uh, natural wildfires, but really intellectual wildfires. When something catches, boy, can it spark uh, very rapidly and widely. And I, I'm really hoping that Enrose, um, you know, continues that type of spark because it really deserves it. It's truly. It's truly incredible. So we're at 31 minutes now, uh, Laura. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I wish we could, we could uh, talk about this a little bit more, but what I really want to get into is something that Martha and I have been brainstorming about for the last few weeks, getting ready for this conversation is, you know, what are, what are some of the different criteria that you might want to think about to figure out what is the right format to choose for En-ROADS? Uh, for your course or for your courses. And it's truly not something that I think needs to fit in one particular type of course. I think there's probably a version that can fit in almost any course, because as you know, we need everyone um, on board helping us to fix this issue. So two slides, one on maybe some of the things to think about and one on some food for thought on the types of learning that you want to instill in your students. So in terms of some of the criteria, if, if you're trying to figure out which one to use, maybe how many lesson hours you can dedicate, you know, the, the learning outcomes, the type of experience you want to create, um, whether or not you want to push in an element of fun, you know, and, and I'm not suggesting that that means that you need to do that. You may have a whole lot of simulations already, and therefore you don't really need a simulation, just the, the, the assignment might be fine. So it depends upon what else is in your course. Um, and perhaps whether you want to use it as a jumping off point for other discussions. You know, once, once you go through the En-ROADS workshop, um, I mean, I'm sure you'll, you'll, see the, you'll see the implications and the connections um, even more quickly than I will because you're so immersed in, in teaching and learning and engaging uh, every day. But you'll see so many ways that you can connect what they have talked about and learned in the En-ROADS event to future lessons, which is great for the students, I think, to, to make connections across the course. Uh, you might want to consider how involved you want to be. You could go through and take the learning and deliver it yourself, or you could maybe uh, challenge one of the students in your program to go through and take some of the learning so that they could do uh, the En-ROADS event. There's all sorts of different ways to do it. Uh, you may want uh, an external facilitator, you might want an internal facilitator, but there are facilitators, En-ROADS ambassadors like us, who can be the lead facilitator, the co-lead, um, whatever you need. And then the other thing to think about is what do you want to develop in your students? Certainly all of these uh, formats would improve climate literacy in the students. Some will get more out of it than others, but you can't help but come out of one of these, uh, whether it's the assignment or the game, and understand a bit more about what impacts what, and what are the big levers, and what are the small levers. Do you want your students to become more critical consumers of information? How many times have you read something uh, that is a, the supposed next big fantastic idea, 
And then three weeks later, you read several other articles that say, well, let's just back off on that a little bit because it turns out that this and this and this and this. So we need to really be much more critical <clears throat> and start connecting the dots more rapidly. Um, you might want your students to, to have an increased awareness to, to see and to discuss assumptions, their own assumptions and the assumptions of their peers. Uh, to see interdependencies, anticipate consequences, positive ones, negative ones, short-term, medium-term, long-term. And En-ROADS is fantastic at that with showing that there may be an impact and it may be positive, but it doesn't really happen until a couple years before 2100. So it's not going to really help us a lot right now. So now what do we need to work on to get some temperature decline now. So it really helps to see the, um, the, the time value as well. <clears throat> to learn how to ask relevant questions. As, as students will listen to questions that their peers are raising in these events, I think it will increase their confidence to, to jump in and ask the, the questions that they've been wanting to ask. It definitely improves discussion skills. And when it gets to something like the game, collaboration skills is everything because you really need to listen carefully to the other stakeholders, understand where they're coming from before you can propose, well, what if we looked at it this way? Do you think you could buy into this? You know, so it brings an entire different uh, perspective. So let me just share a little bit about why we think that uh, and roads works and then we can get into some questions. So first of all, how does it work anyway? So workshop participants, you build the scenario. So we saw a little bit about that landing page and how you can move sliders and build a climate scenario. The nice thing is that the facilitator is not really lecturing. This is not a one way conversation. The facilitator is really acting like a coach. So you're trying to spark dialogue and, and help them see it as a mental model um, and, and guide the group to the shared goal, which is let's create a livable planet. Right now, we're careening toward a not very livable planet. So together we work on this. Um, and as we mentioned, when we took a look at the landing page, a lot of the learning comes from before an action is taken, think about what might happen because that's connected to that. And boy, that, that might come uh, in, into play as well. And so people have to verbalize this before you will even move the slider, which is, which is where a lot of the learning happens. <clears throat> the other really good learning happens at the end of a workshop when you really talk about, so we heard what, we, what you thought We've now created this wonderful climate scenario that's only 1.5 degrees or 1.6, whatever you get to as a group. How do you feel? How do you feel about it? And it is incredible the, the comments that come out when you ask people how they felt about it. People say things like, I can look my kids in the eye. I am happy about having cleaner air to breathe. I'm happy that we're not gonna continue destroying forests in indigenous lands in Brazil. There are so many positive emotions that come out um, and reasons for hope when you take a look at building a more livable climate. <clears throat> so it works because it's a fantastic model, but the reason that you really get the, the action is because it attaches to uh, emotion, not just knowledge. So when you think about when you make a decision, you make a decision based on facts, but also on your gut, on your emotion and your, your complete set of experiences, right? So emotion is just as important as the facts. And I think that's why En-ROADS is just so incredible. It provides the facts, it's grounded in science, it's tested against the the big models used by the UN and so on, and yet it's very fast, gives great information about climate, but then it also connects to how do we feel about that? What are the equity issues there? 
How are marginalized communities going to be affected? How is health going to be affected? What else can we do to improve health outcomes? <clears throat> and just brings it all together. And I think at the end, um, it just makes the learning all that more poignant. And the last point um, I'll make is that really each live workshop is absolutely unique. Um, I did a lot of research for a paper recently and one, I read an, an author that <clears throat> insisted that the conversations about climate needed to reflect the values of the individual community or the individual group or the individual city where it was taking place. The nice thing about En-ROADS is that because you're talking to people within the workshop or within the game, it's already by definition customized to that particular group and their particular values. So you get this, this whole collective experience. You have an interaction, you have questions, you have dialogue and you have reflections that are of that particular group. It makes it so powerful. You're not watching something on the television set and thinking that, that, yeah, that sounds pretty important. It's completely different when you are actually engaging, providing the ideas, challenging your colleagues' ideas, asking questions, watching the, the impact of what you have suggested, you know, putting into the chat whether you think this is a big idea or a small idea. Every student is so engaged in it because it's live that it's, it's better learning and I would argue more memorable learning. I'll bet, you know, people who've gone through the En-ROADS events, I've asked people several months later, so you remember that one that we watched and they, and they, they can recite what they said or what someone else said, it's so memorable. And I think that's because it's live. So we're going to turn to questions now, but let me just leave you with a quick invitation because we would love to have more climate ambassadors. We really need um, a lot of people trying to share this, this tool and the messages that it leaves. So feel free to join any of the webinars you might be interested in. There are many, many live events. There are webinars on specific topics. So if you're interested in agriculture, well, there's a webinar on agriculture and how it relates to the En-ROADS model and so on. If you want to go uh, take all of the, the uh, training webinars and become a climate ambassador, you can get a very cool certificate with a bathtub on it. So there we go. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's an invitation with a little carrot for you. Um, I mean, how many certificates do you have with bathtubs on them? Probably not very many. <laughs> and the... Um, there's also an opportunity, if you become a climate ambassador, there are monthly global calls. So Martha and I sit on these each month and the climate interactive team continues to make changes and improvements to this model when more recent understanding of climate change becomes available. So this was only launched in December, as I mentioned. And since we have been certified, there's been what, two or three different pretty significant changes, improvements made to the model. So we now have more information on air pollution that's now in the model. I know they're now, they're coming out with um, some of the most recent um, forecasts from the UN have changed some parameters around um, population and they're now building that into the model. So that at any point in time, this model represents our latest understanding about the climate and just helps, uh, you know, to create discussions. It's not going to tell you this is what you should do in Fredericton, but it's going to say, let's have the discussion and then sit back and say, okay, now we understand big leverage factors, small leverage factors. Now what should we do in Fredericton? Let's say. Yeah, maybe just to add to that, that um, it just seems more and more clear in terms of uh, thinking about uh, global gover governance uh, more and more. I just think uh, we have to move forward or it's very most beneficial to move forward with the uh, the think global, act local mm -hmm. kind of par paradigm. We, we can't, COVID if nothing else uh, apart from climate change has taught us that we have to keep an eye uh, to see where we fit in the big picture. We 
can't ignore infection rates that are happening in Italy. Uh, but we have to act uh, also then the real meat is that we take that information and use it to actually act locally. And right. I think in terms of governance, we're realizing more and more that it is actually the, the uh, n not, not even the, the countries or even the provinces, but the, the municipal, the, the municipalities, that the local communities, that's really where the crux in the, in the change is, is actually able to handle. And we have more, I think, uh, power uh, as citizens, as, as an individual and community citizens to act with agency and impact than we think we do. So to uh, really keep that in mind, uh, uh, Enroads is never gonna go away. It's a, it's a living, breathing entity that's gonna, it's a model, it's a fl fluid, changing, living model that will always be there to, to refer to because it can, through being a system dynamics based model, it can keep abreast as much as possible of these global trends but I can tell you under the cover uh, that there are any number, uh, for example, here in Calgary, our environmental uh, division, uh, city of Calgary environmental division, I learned uh, that there are already, th that there's uh, there one of the, uh, the mitigation, there are two divisions, resilience and mitigation, and the mitigation uh, uh, division is all over webinar, excuse me, and roads adapting and learning from this global model to put it into municipal context and be able to roll it out as part of Calgary's municipal action plan. So there is a lot happening at, at small sizes. And I'll tell you, New Brunswick, I, you're so fortunate <laughs> to be a, a small province. I also think part, part, part of uh, another uh, real advantage uh, and invitation to representation from New Brunswick and the majority of the maritime provinces is that you're, you're a predominantly rural based province. And if we, it's not just hooking up provinces to provinces to talk, but hooking up the urban lifestyle with those who, who still have, have the beauty and the enjoyment and, and the quality of living that comes with a rural lifestyle. Also, this group is a blend of people from both the humanities and the qu more quantitative world. It's, it's so clear that we, start, we need to start holding hands from our qualitative and emotional side with our quantitative and computational side. There are, so, there are so many reasons why it would be so beneficial to, uh, to be able to grow some climate ambassadorial rep you know, representation uh, in, in New Brunswick and, and many, you know, the, the other uh, maritime provinces. We, Thank we you so much, Martha so and Laura. Thank you so much. So I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Um, so we can allow you to speak if that's your preference. Um, you can speak in French or in English and we can provide the interpretation as needed. Um, or you can type in the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, so any of those features, and we would love to hear from you, and especially Laura and Martha are very excited to open up a conversation with you for comments or questions. And I know it's a lot to, I, to digest, so I can, can just give everybody a second to um, find their voices. And if there are no questions, I can spend a little bit of time uh, just going back to the, uh, the En-ROADS web page, uh, landing page, and um, uh, show some avenues for more rapid information gathering about what's actually happening within the model. I'd love to hear um, at least two or three questions uh, from the group. Don't worry that your question isn't, you know, fully thought out or whatever, whatever you, whatever is on your mind um, as to how En-ROADS might fit for you. Because this is all about, you know, 
could En-ROADS add value for you and how could it? So if you have any questions about that, how you could use it or how it might fit or um, and so on, please ask away. Uh, one question is, is it available in French? Yes, yes, it is. There is a there French, is French already. Yeah, yeah, there is a French tra translation, uh, and it's you can find it on the landing page of En-ROADS. So sorry, and the answer what? is we. Oui. <laughs> Bien sûr. We. Oui. I've also had a private message that says, I'm wondering about the age span in terms of using En-ROADS. I'm a university instructor, but others are teaching K to 12. Yeah. That's a very good question. Uh, Drew Jones, I, I think on average, uh, P, uh, Drew Jones and Elizabeth, who are the co-founders of Climate Interactive, they, uh, at least for the game and, and the workshop, about a grade eight level, I think, minimum. But Drew Jones uh, himself has certainly delivered uh, a, 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 an En-ROADS engagement to kids in kindergarten it's because it, i think because it's so visual and colorful uh and is so easy to engage at a very very uh extremely elementary level there really is something for there's really nobody any age any background who can't learn something from engaging the model so far i've seen it um I've seen En-ROADS events for university level classes and community groups. <clears throat> I could see it also working very well in corporations. And I know some companies are actually using it as the orientation material, part of the orientation material for every new employee around the world because they're so impressed with it. Um, several people are using it with uh, middle school um, and high school. But I think probably the, the most I've heard about is, is university, but truly it, it does span the age group. A uh, question yeah. from Louise. Can you tell us more about how you facilitate? Would you facilitate sessions in my class, for example? Of course. Yeah. Um, so as a, as a facilitator, um, when I facilitate, I will have um, a co-facilitator as well, just to make sure that someone can be watching the chat and I would run a workshop over an hour and a half. <clears throat> I could also facilitate a game. The game is, is more involved as you might imagine being four and a half hours. So you'd have to figure out how you could stretch it over a couple of classes perhaps, or a, a lab period maybe. Um, and then it requires additional co-facilitators to make it run incredibly smoothly. So um, I fell in love with this uh, simulation model so deeply that it is what I am doing now as my next career for the next several decades or until we fix the climate, whichever comes first. <laughs> so um, I would be happy to work with um, anyone on this call or your contacts and we can, we can talk about how we do that. Uh, but yes, would love to, Dr. Cuomo. Thank you for the question. Um, next uh, jo question. Jonathan is asking if you've worked with En-ROADS in classes in New Brunswick and what level or courses? Have not. No, we have not. I thought uh, I heard that there were a couple of people who were using En-ROADS in their courses already. Is, is anyone who's using En-ROADS already in your classes on this call today? I, I know. I know it is. I believe it is being oh. used. Uh, Devin Luke had mentioned that uh, in his initial reach out. Oh, there we go. Janice. Okay. Yes. Mute. Hi. Um, Hi. Yes, I use it. Um, I've used it in two courses. One is um, just an intro to a public policy course. So it's a lot of first year students at St. Thomas, so university level. And then I've also, well, I was going to use it in a third year environmental policy course, except that COVID knocked that uh, off, the, off the table. So um, I should say I have used it in 
in one course and intended to um, in the second. Did you use the one with the different countries or the yeah. one with, yes? I did the simulation game for countries. For countries, so that, that's C roads. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, and we did it over, um, right, that's what I did. And we did it over three classes, I think. So I divided it up into the two different negotiation sessions and then a, um, sort of a, a, a wrap-up um, session, so. Fantastic. Yeah, and here, here's another user um, who's used C. Rose, Céline, Sirat, en français. Uh, I've used it with uh, planning, has used C. Rose and is planning to use en road soon, has used it with uh, Bachelor of Science students in an environmental science course and also in Enviro Studies master's course. Uh, Felicitation, uh, continue. I, 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 was, uh, I must say that my experience as a, a non-teaching, uh, a non-educator, um, newcomer to the field of, uh, of uh, En-ROADS and cl uh, climate science, um, that I, I do, I, I think the educate, there are numerous educa uh, 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 professional educators who are climate ambassadors. And it's tremendously advantage, advantageous for them to uh, be uh, climate ambassadors because they, uh, it gives them the opportunity, once you're sort of on board with Climate Interactive, you can share your, your t educational experiences, uh, you can talk about challenges, you can meet other teacher educators who are, excuse me, who are, using and roads, it's really a, a, a grand, grand scheme for global networking with other educational communities. There are any number of uh, a, a elementary, middle school, uh, high school, well, I, I guess I shouldn't say so much elementary, but certainly middle school and high school teachers, there are, um, uh, there's good old Eduardo, Eduardo. He, he is from, uh, I think he's in Brazil, He's been with these guys for time immemorial. He is one of their most wonderful uh, ambassadors and he uses it. These are, you are really the ones who can take the full advantage of this living encyclopedia, which is what En-ROADS is, because it, it, it's so much more than a single hour and a, and a half or a single student, experience, uh, student assignment experience. It is a whole course because so much of the learning occurs with, by having students have the opportunity to continue to develop their climate literacy, their climate understanding, their discussion skills, their ability to think in systems and, and think dynamically, think with principles of system dynamics, to see it's so exciting for them and their teachers to see a progression through the semester founded on this framework, uh, this living uh, framework called of mental modeling called, uh, called En-ROADS or C-ROADS. So it's, it's to, to get out of the idea that this is a one-off uh, lecture type of experience. No, this is a continued learning curve that will rise in its effectiveness, its efficiency, and its impact long-term in, in people's lives when it's used on a continued basis. And it's going to continue, Enrich is never gonna go. Go away, it's always going to be there as a complement global uh, models, be, simply because it is adaptable and interactive. Yeah, to Martha's so, point, I think that's one of the opportunities with En-ROADS is it's such a powerful experience, but it doesn't have um, sort of on the website, here's what you do for second, third, fourth. So I think there is an opportunity there to, to then come back. So you could come back and say, okay, this is, this is what you said in the last course about what gave you hope. Let's explore that a bit more. Or students could, you know, you, you could say, let's take a look at some of those um, system dynamics that we saw happening. Let's explore that and what does that mean? Or you could talk about here's the actions you said you wanted to take. 
as a result of the En-ROADS workshop. Let's buddy up with somebody else, you know, turn to the person next to you, and I want you to share and kind of become an accountability buddy um, to, to take those actions in your own life. There are just so many ways that, that you could come back to this again and again um, and really enhance the experience. Um, what? I'd love to, um, I'd love to just finish with one more question, mm -hmm. um, if that's okay. So the last question would be, um, is there a very large time commitment of um, signing up and is there a long process to take that um, might be difficult for um, but at least I, I'm, I'm sure that university professors as well, but especially K to 12 teachers have a lot of pressure of um, meeting curriculum guidelines as well as um, just the PD sessions that they're required to take as well as all sorts of other time commitments. So is this something that is accessible to them in that way or is it a very large commitment? In terms of becoming trained and, and doing it in their classrooms? Well, you don't need to become a climate ambassador, technically, to, to run it. You'll, you'll want to join a few of the webinars so that you are comfortable and confident um, sharing the model and being able to answer questions and so on. So, you know, you could, you could invest 10 hours, I think, and be fairly comfortable, or you can invest 40 to 50 hours and be very comfortable. I think that the more workshops and games that I deliver, the more comfortable I become and the more I find out about the model, it just, the learning just keeps occurring. But again, this is not one where the educator feels like they need to have all the answers. A student asks a great question and you don't know the answer, that's not a problem. Let's, let's search for that together. And you start clicking in the model and you learn together. You know, you're, you're, you're a facilitator, you're a coach. Um, so there, there's a bit of a commitment, but I gotta tell you, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and and if, if anyone doesn't want to, to spend that time, but still wants to bring the experience, then call on a climate ambassador and we'll just, you know, flock, flop in and do the experience and, and sign off. Uh, and, and I would also say uh, to, to uh, because Emerald is not going to go away, it's sort of like a bus on a bus line. If you miss the first bus, uh, there's going to be another bus coming around in another 10-15 uh, minutes and those that will that's that circuit will always be in place so that you can time your you can learn very gradually and over oui, the years on peut graduellement et au fil des années so uh, similar to uh, a, a fellow like Eduardo in Brazil he has evolved his integration uh, and use of En-ROADS is in his ba basic teaching over over many years. Uh, there's no uh, away we go. Thank you so much for this presentation. It's really inspiring. So everybody that is interested, um, uh, well, no, uh, if it's okay, we're going to be sending out the presentation deck. So that'll include all of the links and everything. And we'll make sure to add in the French links as well um into the the deck and um if you have any other questions i'm sure that laura and martha are more than happy to answer them via email um so thank Not you just so happy, much everybody. We absolutely welcome them please send yeah. us your questions yeah truly We'd truly honored yeah we would love to stay in touch and, and once... thank you so much to i'm sorry Tommy. i i interrupt you with, but i want to make sure thank you to you thank you sam thank you to 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 Lee, uh, and a thank you to Dr. Como. This is, uh, yeah. we're yeah, truly honored to have been involved. I'm yeah. sorry, thank go you ahead. For yeah, thank you for taking your time. 